so I think the challenge that you all will have is getting people in the room who want to have the hard discussion first. Like, if you're going to talk about diversity, you can talk about diversity, but your diversity needs to be inclusive. It means that you can't just go get the, the five black people and the six Native Americans and the five white people that eat granolas and, you know, wear the Jesus sandals and get together and, and knit and ta-da, we got diversity. It's, what is the goal of the diversity? Like, are you aware of who's in your community? The reason people feel isolated is because they're not welcome. They're not welcome for very specific and historical reasons. Because every day you're reminded of what society thinks of you. You know, it's everybody, you know, 20 years ago to be an LBGTQ was like literally taking your life in your hands. Now you have act up, code pink, you have all these things, and it's really, and people are celebrating gay pride and gay marriage, but I've had people on Twitter who are fighting for LGBTQ rights, being upset that a child with a disability wants to be included in their class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my question is, so you don't want to, you don't want to be discriminated against, mm -hmm. but you discriminate you suck, <laughs> and you and and you are just and and the thing you have to tell people is like if you if you only do it halfway, you are undermining the entire mission. Like if you're doing social justice, I can't as much as I'm fighting for disability rights, I also have to fight for immigrant rights because if you're a person with a disability who's an immigrant, we have the case up in Washington young lady who was seeking asylum with Down syndrome got picked up by ICE mm -hmm. and, has been in, and has been incarcerated for three years. Mm -hmm. You just had an immigrant with a med complex medical condition coming for asylum seeking, had a medical condition with disability and die in custody. Mm -hmm. So if you are fighting for immigrant rights, why is their disability excluding them from that discussion? Again, it's about who is calling and typically let me just be clear to y'all. I'm very cynical about people who do this. Because it became, because back in the day, it was cultural competency. Mm -hmm. Then it was affirmative action. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was cross culture. Now it's the, the catchy word is intersectionality. Right? right? Mm -hmm. So the, the buzzwords get really, really cool, but nobody wants to do the work. And nobody wants to do the work because in order for you to be inclusive in diversity, you have to have an ASL interpreter, mm -hmm. a CARP reporter. You have to offer English translation. You need to make sure your print is in 14 point font. And then people start hearing this and they go, we just can't bring the Negroes and some chickens. They have to be, like, that's diversity, <laughs> right? Um, like, you, yeah. you have to be hard about this. Um, like, I, we, we had to put out, okay, so the Urban League puts out a report called State of Black America. Right? And I, but it's like, oh, look at the state of life. We had to have, we had to issue a supplemental report because they had completely ignored people of color with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Even though disability happens at a four times higher rate within the very same community that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, and the question is, okay, we're going to have the diversity training. Well, who's on the committee? Mm -hmm. And what are you trying to do? And if you're talking about diversity, where are you holding these meetings at? Mm -hmm. Who are you inviting? Mm -hmm. Who are you inviting? I'm not inviting. And, and when the first thing in the organizing, they say, you, when you look at the table, the first question you ask is, who's not? Who's not here? And so the hard part is, so it's not hard, it's just some of the people who do it, like this is their career. And they make a lot of money off of telling, making people feel warm and fuzzy about coming to a diversity training. Oh, I sat down and it was awesome. I learned how to engage people. And yes, and I have some Spanish language people. And, you know, and Maria came and she brought some refried beans. And hey, we have culture. No. If you really want to do this work, this means you go, that means do you have somebody <coughs> who's First Nation, who's here in Tomo County, who literally are looking at the people who colonized their ancestral land 
every day who control their socioeconomic outcome every day. How do you deal with looking at your abuser and your traumatizer every day? Yes. Um, along that line, uh, the, the, the district is embarking on a, a diversity, equity, inclusion program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, including everyone in these discussions, what is your uh, uh, experience about trying to include people, the, the people that aren't there, who you're not inviting, might be people who are maybe hostile right. to the to the discussion. Right. So, what is your ex experience along that? My experience, well, I, my experience is that I, what I tell people is that yes, you want to do the work, but it works both ways, right? Mm -hmm. So, like people go, "Oh my God, you know, we trying to do." It. I say. So one of the analogies I use is that we did some some work in the in the in the Asian community, and in the Asian community, it is not, and particularly in the Chinese community, Mandarin to be specific, to acknowledge that you have a disability in your family is to acknowledge the shame of your family. Mm -hmm. So it's seen as a curse, and so as I acknowledge that I have a curse for my family. Then you know, in my when I like, as much as I want to come hang with you, I still got to go back to my home. So I have to function in my community. So is is it is it worth me not being able to function in my community to acknowledge this disability? And so some of the, the challenge that I've had in organizing this stuff is that the people who usually show up are the people who always show up. And they're the same sixteen people, mm -hmm. and they may bring right, and they may bring their aunt. So now you got sixteen and a half, right? So um, it's really it's because it's hard work, and I think a lot of people just don't they haven't come to their realization that people, you know, one you don't want to be embarrassed, two you don't want to admit that you need help. It's a pride issue, right? Mm -hmm. Just like they were talking about the housing about reporting whether or not you're homeless. So one of the things that I have found is that kids are the best. Mm -hmm. Bring the youth. Have the youth diversity. They'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. They will have because kids, kids. I mean, as as crazy as they are, <laughs> right? But if you give them the latitude to talk about differences and discussions and shape it, it's like okay. So who do you know? Well, I didn't know Johnny had this. I didn't know Simpson had that. I didn't know Keith had this. I didn't know him. You start to see that because you know we as adults we we were kind of calcified in our way of thinking, dependent on what we do. But when it comes to diversity and inclusion, I've learned that in the, at least in the, the work that I've done, half of the, and I'm being generous, half of the people are only doing it because they got the grant. <laughs> oh, we got a grant. There's a grant. The state's offering the grant. Come on, and they'll run around and they know so and so sits in this. They'll sign the MOU. So and so sign the MOU. Then you get this grant. But then the grant, then the work is, and that's the only reason they do the work is because they get the grant. But you have to be able to do the work off the grant. So it's, you know, when you put out a public event, do you have alternative languages, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be there, but just say, okay, if you, you know, here in Tilma County, we're doing such and such and so and so, and underneath that, have it in whatever languages also exist in Tilma County. That subtly shows the people that somebody in that process was thinking about me. Mm -hmm. And what that does is they give them the impetus to then engage you. So they'll bring you, because you don't, because we, you know, we don't know what we don't know. Right. But at least if you make it make an attempt and just be honest and say, you know, today we want to do diversity, but we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we need your help. We need you to help us be better as opposed to, you know, this is what we're going to do. Come down to see how great we are. Because at the National, a lot of my friends now are all in D.C. at these big weight disability conferences, disability organizations. And they're trash. Mm -hmm. The leadership has been the leadership for 25 years. Mm -hmm. I could never stay at the Independent Living Center because my executive director finally got a job that pays him more than Social Security and allows him to pay the copay to keep his PCA. So hell no, he's not going to leave that job. 
So you're skilled. So there's no there's no turnover in leadership. Um, when you talk about youth development and leadership, like there's pre ADA leaders, post ADA leaders, and it's it's a like I'm a sociologist by trade, so I look at this as a very you know I stand back and give it the thirty thousand foot look. But I it what I've learned is that once people are aware of the issue, then they make a calculation. If I address the issue, what's in it for me? Hmm. As a very like, and it, and it does partic yeah, particularly in the disability community, they boil down to, okay, if I do this and I let deal man, then I ain't got no job, yeah. or there's less funding for my program, mm -hmm. and now we have to spread it out to. So I think the diversity issue, and if you're talking about equity, I'm just gonna do this real quick. But the reason it's important about diversity and services, and equity and services is that there is a clear discrepancy in terms of geographic location, socioeconomic status, and ethnicity in terms of the amount of services a particular family can get in the state. So just using Massachusetts or California data, for every seven services a white middle-income family will get, a Latino family or black family gets two. If they got the same diagnosis, they go to the same state agency, but there's disparities in access to services. That's not because it exists in nature. Somebody's making a calculated decision, whether they're conscious or not, whether it's sexism, racism, classism, or whatever, but that happens. <coughs> and how do you stop it from happening? Is that typically you might have to just, you know, <laughs> without, without having a Jim Jones scenario, you just have to like work through it. And so I think diversity has its place but the challenge is having the people who are, who are open enough to say, okay, I don't know everything, but I really want to do this. And having people support that. Yes? We have 10 minutes. Okay. Can we fit one more in? Sure. Okay, can we end at noon? Sure. Okay. okay. And we'll leave that to you. The clock's right here. All right, I got you. I got you. Else <laughs> want to ask a question? Um, and I wanted you guys to know, um, we are headed to Manzanita. Dan has reserved one of our community wheelchairs, and we are going on the beach, so we're super proud. You guys are all welcome. Whoever wants to come, and it's just an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anybody else have anything for Keith? Well, I have something. Um, I'm kind of on the front lines of seeing people from all races come into. I've been in the grocery industry for many, many years. And what you're talking about with the youth, the youth has not seen these things that as adults, people turn a blind eye to it. They do. They see somebody in a smart cart, and sometimes there'll be five or six of them running around. And they run from them instead of going out and helping them. Get around from the counter. Go see exactly what they need. The younger people have not been dramatizing grew up my, my dad always said that racism will it'll slowly filter out with as people grow it, it should go away because the youth see the, the need to help people it should go away well my dad was wrong it didn't go away right. it hasn't gone away right. it hasn't gotten any better dad right. but with the youth they don't know that yet right. they haven't been afflicted by people's opinions and I really think that if you're going to really tackle the problem with everything you're talking about it starts with their kids yeah. it, regardless if, if you you have someone with autism in, in a class and a kid has a problem with that they're they're learn they learn at a young age they're accepted right and it, and it goes on through the rest of their lives so with that's really where it needs to start is the kids. The yeah. parents, too. Yeah. The parents mm -hmm. and how they train their kids. And how they train yeah. their kids, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Well, I, I'll tell you, to that point, I was telling Julian when we was coming up, my son, my oldest son, his mother's white. My ex-wife was Haitian. So her cousins came over, first generation. And they were out, and I gave them the key, and they went to the movies. And they came back, and they were using derogatory terms, calling people retards and fags. And I cussed them out. Mm -hmm. And I stopped. I said, let me tell you something, Jamal. That's my son. I said, your mama white, your daddy crippled. You, you have no room to talk. We don't, we don't tolerate that here. 
And I turned to Cardell. I said, Cardell, you a coconut. You just got here. Nobody understands your language. And I used that because they were, they were sitting there like, <laughs> I said, see how that feels? Mm -hmm. Now you, the, and, and again, the, the, and I couched it very much like, you don't have to like everybody. No, you, you have to respect got, them, though. But that's, you that's have the to biggest thing that I've always taught people that I work with is you don't have to like everybody. You just, you just have to treat them with respect. Treat them. Treat them. Old is adage in the book. Mm -hmm. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Because yeah. if you're bad enough to talk crazy to them, you don't come crying to me. He talked crazy about me. Well, what did you do? Mm -hmm. Now, the, and, the, and the other adage is the only person in this world you can control is yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, you can talk about everybody, but literally the only actions of a human you can control are your own. And I, my kids, my kids are, <laughs> they, 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 they hit the jackpot because I'm nuts. So, they, <laughs> like, so all of it goes out the way, but my kids, like, when we play, everybody hands stuff to my feet because I use my feet. But then I had to explain to them, I said, when I come to your school, I'm going to be their dad, where everybody's going to look at you and they're going to try to clown you because your dad is crippled, quote. Or they're going to try to act funny because my, my oldest, my 11-year-old daughter, her mother has a visual impairment. So when she shows up, she has the cane. I said, so everything I'm telling you now, probably won't recognize it because you're young, you know, but at least you'll know that when you determine somebody's worth, it won't be based upon what you what your personal think about their humanity like yeah. you, you give everybody the respect up until they prove that they don't deserve it mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and that really has been the crux and the driving point it's like like when i was talking to the kids yesterday it's not really about fitting in or a click if you're not comfortable in your skin then what you're going to do is start trying to find flaws in everybody else mm -hmm. so get comfortable with yourself and if you're running away from people because ew god i'm gonna catch Cerebral palsy. Now, see again, the people I know, we do stuff like ride by you and go, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> right? But I will tell you that the reason you have to you have to constantly redo that is because even in, if I go, went to the doctor, right? Medical checkup, all that stuff, they had to take my blood pressure. Now, the way my hand is, you gotta do a little work to get the blood pressure. The doctor looked at me and was like, Ah, your blood pressure looks like 120 over 60. Mm -hmm. Just look, I said, so you can look at me and see what my blood pressure is, right? Oh. And this is the doctor. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm like, so if that, so you chose a profession to help people, but because I have a, because I have a disability, you're put off by doing your job. Then what the hell you got the job for? Mm -hmm. You can go do something else. Go fishing. You ain't got to, then you ain't got to deal with black people with disabilities. But if you're a doctor, you are here to help people get better. And so, in terms of the way you talked about it, and people running away, and scarcity and all of that, not everybody wants to, because I don't want to have to, like, take every moment to be a teachable moment. Because mm -hmm. as much as it could be, that's exhausting. Mm -hmm. Like, it wears on your mentals. It's, yeah. you have to, like... Getting up every day, like I know, when I go to the airport, I have to prep myself. Because somebody, somewhere, is going to say some absolutely backwards ass dot 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 and test my patience on the way here. Sitting at the airport, minding my business. Oh my God. Is his worker with him? Oh. My worker. Sex worker, my psychologist worker, which worker? But the presumption was I couldn't function without another human. Mm -hmm. And that's a systemic and a societal thing. That's why you have people talking about representation in media, representation in film. But that's why I also think you here in this county have a beautiful opportunity because you're so, so small. It's not two million people, right? You can start to say, okay, kids. If you could decide, if you could design Tillamook County so that anybody could come here, what would it look like? Right? If you could design what our programs for the summer would look like in terms of anybody, what would it look like? 
And if somebody shows up in the electric wheelchair and wants to go canoeing, what's the solution? Kids will come up with the, well, we'll put pontoons on the wheelchair. That's a good idea, but he might get electrocuted, so let's try to find something else. Um, but just, just if you give them the, the impetus to, to start thinking about who they're with and their families, and just giving them the, the reassurance that even though I may not be as far ahead in my, quote, social thinking as my kid, what I won't do is stymie their growth. I'll, I'll, I'll open it up because their friends may have autism or Down syndrome or spinal bifida or cerebral palsy or MS or, i just tell you this before it's 12 o'clock, if you watch ESPN, there was a player, a basketball player from Kent State who scored his first two buckets. The reason it's a big idea, big deal is because he's the first NAAC, NCAA Division One player with autism mm -hmm. to score a point in the, in the competitive basketball game. Because usually you'll see them, and they brought Tommy onto the court, <laughs> and Tommy <laughs> ran down, and you'll see the other team just kind of stand there, and they'll, go Tommy, throw it in the basket, and Tommy throws it. Oh yeah, he scored! <laughs> that ain't a game. That's pity. Yeah. Put Tommy in the game, put his ass on the block, and watch if he can score. That's, right. That's the game. He is not going to look at you and say, thank you for letting me score. Yeah. He wants to I play the game. Right. Yeah. So, that's the, so, I, so in terms of the diversity and the cultural outreach, it's be authentic about what the end goal is. Mm -hmm. Define what diversity is. What is inclusion? In Tillamook County, what does that look like for you all? If you want to age in place, how do you get the community ready for when everybody here is 90? Right? I would love to see y'all like moped racing and you're in your, in your hover rounds down the boardwalk right? with your oxygen bags on the back talking about, let's go. Right? And so I, I, I thank you all again for having me. You guys have been absolutely amazing.